Hi, it's Joe from Roaming with the Rubes and today we're going to discuss doing canvas repairs and that on your camper. If uh, your camper's a bit like uh, our girl Hazel here who's uh, had a few years under a roof, you're bound to have some damage uh, to your canvas and, and the like. And uh, it might be a bit like this. Probably the most common place you're going to see damage is here on the back ends. This uh, outer stitching quite often gets frayed and scuffed and, and comes away. Also this uh, section here which is attached to your sail track can also let go. I've had to repair both of those. And I added a, a little piece of webbing here so I'm able to, uh, to do that. It's nice to be able to do that I should say. Uh, it stops your, uh, your bag end from sort of flapping in the breeze. Just clips on like this. One common bit of damage to the canvas is, is right here, this little flap that goes underneath and is velcroed under the bed end. What, what can happen is it gets caught um, when you're sliding the bed end in and it gets torn on that seam just there inside. It gets ripped off. I've seen it about, you know, yay long needing to be repaired. I've seen this stitching around here, perish and let go. Uh, it's not just your camper, it can be things like uh, your camp chairs. Very common problem with this, this type of camp chair is uh, the arms here, this, this stitching here will let go. You lose an arm, had that happen to me a few times. So if you've experienced similar damage on your camper, there's a really simple little tool you can use and here it is it's called the speedy stitcher let's go find out a little bit about it so this is my speedy stitcher I bought it about seven years ago and I'm very very happy with it I think the going price for these at the moment is around $50 Australian uh, for the uh, made in the US one and there's quite a few clones available on eBay and Amazon, uh, you know, in the area of about $20 to $30, so a bit cheaper. I have no idea what the quality of these uh, copies uh, are like, but uh, I do know that this one is, is very well made. So let's open up the box and you can see uh, the unit. Here's the actual sewing all itself. Very simple little device. Beautifully made, nice uh, varnished wooden handle, nice bright metal, no rust showing after seven years. Uh, all looks uh, just like new, so it is a quality made product. And also in the box comes a, a very well written instruction sheet with all the information that you need there to use your speedy stitcher. Plus uh, some accessories that are also available. So, let's go and set this up to do a, uh, a test piece so you can see how it works. So to start with, we'll look in the, uh, the end of the handle. You'll see there's a little metal cap here. We'll pull that cap out and that reveals the bobbin that contains the thread for the speedy stitcher. This isn't the original thread. This is cell making thread that I happen to have a reel of and thought uh, what the hell I'm going to use this because it's beautifully strong braided waxed polyester line. Uh, the, the normal thread it comes with is, is more sort of a brownie colour. It's also a uh, waxed cotton I think most of them. Anyway, I'm rabbiting on. What we have to do is we have to thread this through a hole down here. It comes out there. So let's do that. Beautiful. And we pop the bobbin in, pull the thread out, and we'll pop the end cap on. So that's step one. Next step, you'll notice there's a, a little tack, a little post. That's for uh, putting a turn on there, or two if your thread happens to be fairly slippery, as this one is. And that just gives you a bit of back tension on the, on the bobbin. Now, we'll take the chuck off. And that reveals the needle stories. Two needles in there. The first one is, is bent over. I have no idea what that's for. 
Uh, if anybody has a clue, please drop a comment in the remarks down there. I'd love to know. And then you get the standard straight needle, which is incredibly sharp, I might add. But I find this one is a little bit too thick for canvas work and, and vinyl work. I went and bought a, a set of needles, spare needles for the Speedy Stitcher. And in that kit was this nice finer needle. You can see the size difference there. And this one here is particularly good for, uh, for canvas and vinyl work. So we're going to mount that needle into our Speedy Stitcher. Now the needle itself has a groove in it. I'm just going to run my fingernail along it. There's a little groove there that leads up to the eye. That groove lines up with this groove here in the chuck. Now what we do is we feed our line into this slot here which also lines up with that groove and then we thread the eye of the needle hopefully. Oh look at that! Oh, I, I impress myself sometimes. That was awesome. I won't tell you how many times I tried to do that <laughs> and it didn't happen. I ended up with a frayed mess on the end of the cotton. But anyway, there we go. And that, folks, is the Speedy Stitcher ready to go. Now, let's, uh, let's do a little project and demonstrate it. I'll pop it down there. Okay, let's do some stitching. Here's our little project. It's just a couple of pieces of vinyl. This is the same sort of vinyl that you'll find uh, on the side of your uh, Jayco camper van. Now, I like to rule a line on my, th uh, on my cloth so I, I can see where I'm going to stitch. It just makes the stitching a lot neater. Let's uh, do that. Now the other thing we've got to have ready is the actual thread uh, on the Speedy Stitcher. They recommend it's about twice the length of the project so that you've got uh, plenty of overlap there. And let's get cracking. It's recommended that you keep this groove to the top when you're doing a stitch. We'll just start our first stitch here. We'll push through the vinyl. Try not to stab ourselves while we're at it. And uh, I'm going to pull that bit of thread through. Now this thread follows the back of the pro uh, project. We're going to pull the needle out and we're going to commence our first stitch. So uh, we'll go down a couple of millimetres. We're going to push that needle through. As you can see there, now I'm going to pull back a little bit and create a loop. And this loose end of uh, thread, we're going to poke it through. I'm going to put my thumb on the back there to hold it. And I'm going to pull the needle out and we're actually going to pull the line and lock the stitch off. So you can see there, the stitch is actually a knot. It's exactly the same stitch that there is on a, a sewing machine. So it's quite a strong stitch. Now we're going to move and do our second stitch. We'll push through. Pull the needle back a little bit. And we're going to feed that line through the loop. Put my thumb there to hold the line. And we're going to tighten and lock that stitch off. So there's our second stitch done. All nice and tight. We're going to come through and do the third one. Push through. We're going to pull back and make our little loop. This loose end goes through there. Thumb on the back of the vinyl to hold the thread. And we pull back and lock that stitch off. Okay, fourth stitch. Same deal. Push through, pull back, make a nice loop. Feed the line through, hold it nice and firm, and then we pull back and lock the stitch off. So there, we've got four, four stitches done. Now the great thing about this is, the stitching isn't loose. It's all locked in nice and solid. So uh, 
it uh, progresses quite nicely. We'll do a few more stitches and then we're going to uh, finish it off off camera and show you how to uh, end the stitch. So here we go. Loop through, thumb on the vinyl, let's pull through and lock that stitch. One more, pull the loop through. You see you can get quite a, a rhythm going with this and it actually is not the slowest thing in the world to do. We've locked that one off and one last one for good measure. Pull the loop back, through, hold it and pull back. There we go. So there's a bit of stitching uh, done there. Now I recommend you don't do any more than say 150 mil or 200 mil at a time. Otherwise these uh, loose ends get a little bit unwieldy. So do 150 to 200 mil, lock it off, start again and continue on. I've actually done a bag end for uh, my Jayco Hawk, uh, which is over two meters, uh, just sitting in front of the TV and uh, finished it uh, in an evening. Uh, it was quite, uh, quite satisfying. Anyway, we'll be back in a second and we'll show you how to close this stitch off. So there we are, we've, uh, we've run along and stitched. I, <laughs> I didn't really cut that uh, fabric too well, so uh, I've had to come a little bit short, but let's finish this last, um, last bit of the stitching. Very simple, we go through again one more time. However, instead of feeding this through the loop, we actually pull an additional amount of line through. I'm sorry folks, I'm just going to loosen that up so I can pull a bit more through. Yeah, that should do. And I'm going to cut quite close to the needle now. And we'll pull the needle back through. And if you have a look, what we end up with is, is two threads. Okay. We're going to do an overhand knot, so it's the same knot as you, you do on your shoelace when you start to uh, tie your shoelace. Tie it off. We're going to do one more. Now, just a, a note to self and to yourself. Leave the line a little bit longer than what I've done. <laughs> it makes it easier to grab. And we're going to do one more knot for good measure. If we can. Now, it'd be quite funny if you could see me. My tongue is moving at a million miles an hour. I think we're just going to do two knots. That's plenty tight enough for this project. So we trim the end off fairly close. Now that's all nice and tied off and quite snug. And to finish it off, grab a little cigarette lighter and we're just going to melt the end of the polyester line and form it into a, a little bit of a mushroom. So that's the stitch closed off. It's incredibly strong. That's going nowhere, that stitching. And uh, you know, any, any little repair jobs, you can get it done with this uh, speedy stitcher and, and a bit of time and patience. Well, I hope you found that video interesting and informative. Uh, it's amazing what you can do uh, if you've got the right tools. And I'm a big fan of uh, simple tools that have been around for a long time and uh, can get the job done. And that's the case with this little speedy stitcher. Uh, it was designed about 100 years ago and uh, still relevant. We're not sponsored by them. I bought mine, like I said, about seven years ago and uh, I've used it to repair many, many things. So uh, I hope uh, the video encourages you to maybe grab one and give it a try and uh, save a bit of money. First job you do with your Speedy Stitch will pay for the, pay for the unit. No problem at all. 
anyway thanks for watching we we don't take it for granted we really appreciate that you uh, take the time to uh, watch our content if you found the content useful please consider subscribing uh, give us a like leave a comment especially if you know what that bent needles for I'd love to know leave me a comment anyway till next time we'll see you again